Hey, welcome to Christian Fitness. Welcome to our kitchen. As you can see, we have a delicious treat for you today. Pretty easy to guess because they're all strewn all over the <laughs> counter, but it is watermelon. We are going to make a delicious what? We're going to make a delicious watermelon drink. Of all things, a lot of people don't realize you can make a great refreshing drink, but... Yeah, we bought some watermelon, and normally this is a smaller one, which I kind of like this size, but we bought a giant, you know, one of those giant 400-pound watermelon you can hardly carry into the house. Um, anyway, so we bought that. We thought, what? It's just the two of us. How are we going to eat all this? We didn't have any company over or anything. And Lori all of a sudden goes, wait a minute. When I was a girl, um, I spent a lot of time with my grandparents, and... You know, in Miami, it is hot in the summertime. And they would have lots of watermelons, and they would take watermelon for all of us and just throw it in the blender and blend it up and put some ice in it, and it was refreshing. So we found a way to use some of the extra watermelon we had by just one of my family and brought back such great memories. So do that with your kids or your grandkids. It's a great way to make memories. Simple, simple yes. to make. You can, we'll get into that in a minute though. On, on We're gonna go ahead and make it for you. Yes. Uh, we'll actually make it for us. We'll show you how to make it unless you, anyway. So we'll <laughs> make it for ourselves, show you how to make it. Um, but watermelon is so, so good for you. Uh, we wanna talk about some of the nutritional benefits. Some of the nutritional benefits of watermelon, first off, besides the fact that it is so hydrating, that's why it's called watermelon, <laughs> um, it's low in calories. It's full of fiber, so there's a lot of fiber in it. There are vitamins A, C, and D, and B, which is great. Um, it's very high in antioxidants, and it's a very high anti-inflammatory fruit which has great benefits to it. Besides the fact that the sugar is a natural sugar, mm -hmm. so you don't have to add anything to this. Um, and natural sugar from fruits cre combined into the body, it creates energy, so you want that. Your body will process right. that. Um, one other really interesting fact, a lot of people say tomatoes are really, really important. And they are. And they are, <laughs> but they are because they have ly lycopene. That is the red that fruits and vegetables are, and tomato is a fruit just like watermelon is, but the red is lycopene. Lycopene is very good for heart health, extremely good for heart health, lots of great benefits. So that's something that you can benefit from by eating watermelon. Watermelon actually has more lycopene than a tomato. And as she said, it's good for your heart, which of course a tomato is shaped kind of like your heart, which is kind of easy and, and neat way to remember that. But so vitamins A, B, C, and magnesium. That's one thing a lot of people don't realize. There's so many nutrients in watermelon, but there's magnesium. A lot of people are magnesium. They may have a deficiency or be a little bit low. So we encourage you get your vitamins, your nutrients, your minerals from the actual foods. You don't necessarily have to take, you know, supplements and all those things. Get your magnesium from the watermelon. This so, is so get healthy. Loud. No, that's okay. Turn so it up. Keep Go talking, for it. and I'm going <laughs> to. I'm staying away over here, so maybe we'll be oh, quite as loud. Oh, it's not even on. That might help. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing the lid was on when you did that. <laughs> Always make sure the lid is on. Well, a couple tips. You'll see we've got ice out here. Um, the watermelon, it was in the refrigerator, so it's a little bit cold. You can see we put it into its tiny chunks, you know, maybe one inch by one inch squares. The reason for that is if you put this giant triangle, if we put this triangle in the blender, you know, of course, cut the rind off of it, it would be hard for the blender to blind up, dr grind up a bunch of these giant triangles. So if you use the giant, just put in huge squares of watermelon, your blender may have trouble grinding it up. So we cut into little like one inch squares. She added a little bit of water and then she's gonna add some ice just so it gets really chilled. Yeah, because this is just so good cold. Another tip is you can actually take your watermelon and put it in cubes and put it in ice trays. So, or you can blend it up and cube it and then use the cubes with more watermelon. No, that doesn't make sense, but if it's frozen, you're gonna to have to add water to it. Or you can so, just put it in water, make these little watermelon ice cubes and then just put that in a glass of water right. and then you get kind That's of watermelon true. infused water, flavored water, it's delicious. There's a lot of ways to flavor watermelon juice. Um, if it's frozen and you can't get it to liquefy, then you can use coconut water or mm -hmm. coconut milk. But I like coconut water because, and I usually use a really good one so that it doesn't um, have a lot of sugar in it. You, you want a really natural source. Um, the other thing is So our, can our ingredients add, so far. Oh, today. We've had water, ice, and watermelon. So really, all well, we've had is watermelon. We have one other thing. What one is other this? Thing. 
I like to add mint. So I already did that way on the bottom, just a tiny bit, because a little mint goes a long way. It makes it refreshing, but, so today it is just watermelon, it is just ice, a tiny bit of, just a tiny bit of water, and then a little bit of mint. So that's what today's juice is. Other ways, um, for a couple of days we did watermelon, a tiny slice of uh, cucumber, mm -hmm. uh, which is fantastic, a little bit of pineapple. So I mean, you can add as much as you want. You can make it a smoothie. We were trying to do this as a refreshing drink. A lot of people like to have dessert. And a lot of people will say, oh, I have ice cream. Every single night we've had people tell us, oh, we have an ice cream <laughs> every night for dessert. I'm going, oh, egads. So it, this is a great way to get sweet, get yes, a dessert. The sugar, right, the sugar and the fruit. It's healthy, extremely healthy. It's very filling, which and is very really low good. in calories. Yes. What, just one little scoop of ice cream averages about 240 calories. This may only be 40 calories. So you're, I mean, about right. So anyway, calorie count very low in calories and nutritious. We talk about all the vitamins, the magnesium, the lycopene. So extremely healthy. Ice cream doesn't have any of those. So <laughs> we encourage you. Yeah, try this as a dessert. You can try it with breakfast. Very filling. You can have it with a muffin at breakfast or with some eggs. I mean, you can you can do it any time of day. Especially you know at a picnic, it's great as a drink or a really refreshing drink. And that's why she added the ice. This ice makes it nice and cold and refreshing, especially here in hot Florida. Oh yes, our little baby. <laughs> a little baby watermelon. We went to a watermelon farm. You could, we discussed that in another show, but we actually went to a watermelon as a tomato farm, but they also did watermelon, and we brought this little souvenir home, a little tiny watermelon, uh, but it, it, that was a lot of fun going to the farm, and, and that encouraged us. We've been drinking uh, and eating watermelon for weeks now. Well, there's so many benefits to watermelon on top of the fact that it's so filling, so if you need something refreshing and something that will hydrate oh, you very so quickly, um, this would be great right after a workout or before a workout because it's not adding a lot of bulk to you. You don't want too much if you're going to do a heavy workout, but yeah, so this is a really great way to get nutrition and hydration at the same Vitamins, time. Vitamins, magnesium, yeah, lycopene, it is, it's delicious. I mean, it tastes like watermelon, imagine that, but With a little <laughs> bit watermelon of mint. drink, a little bit of mint, it's delicious. So we'll actually have the crew come up later and taste test, see what they think about it. But it is Christian Fitness, so we do want to get a little exercise in. Although there's nothing wrong with staying in the kitchen the whole time. Today we have a, a test for you. Yeah, very healthy for us to get ready for our test. So we have a whole series of what they call senior fitness tests. There's lower body strength, upper body strength, flexibility. Today we're going to do endurance. We're gonna see how good you are, how, how, how much in shape you are, how good your heart is, how strong your heart is, what your endurance is. And this is a really, really easy test. All you're gonna do is march in place for two minutes. So we'll get started in, in just a second, but let me demonstrate it. If you have maybe a wall or you know a piece of furniture or around something, person. or a person, <laughs> you wanna gauge how high you wanna get your knee on your march. Yeah. You really want it about halfway between your patella or the kneecap and the top of your hip. So halfway for me would be around right here. So I know I need to get about as high as Lori, the bottom of Lori's white shirt, undershirt there. If you have something at home, you know, the top of the flowers or a coffee table or whatever it is, just to gauge how high you want your knee, you could have a, you know, you could have a friend. If you have a partner there, they could actually hold their hand up. And you're gonna count only one knee. So in other words, as Lori's demonstrating, that's, there's one, that one doesn't count, two, that one doesn't count, three, okay. So you only count every other knee lift, so just count the left knee. And she's gonna march while or your right we're both knee, gonna do it, yeah. yeah. So either knee, just count, and you're gonna wanna bring it about to that height. So just, you know, up to here. If you wanna put your hands out, you could do that. And you're just gonna count the one side, and we're gonna do this Are for we two doing minutes. This yet? No, not, yet. not yet, not <laughs> yet. We get the timer all queued up. Um, and you're gonna do it for two minutes. Count how many repetitions you do. And during that two minutes, we're gonna talk to you, maybe give you some goals to try to reach. All right, so are we ready? We're ready. And two, one, and go. So for two minutes, we're just gonna march in place. Oh, and the key is, since this is a test, go as fast as you can, comfortably. Yes. Now, if you if you are if you have a cane or a walker or you're not stable, go ahead. You know, you can put use your it. hand out. Yeah, use a cane if you need to. Hold on to a chair. Hold on to your partner <laughs> if you need to. Actually, if you're not stable enough, go ahead and hold on to something you to help you with your march. You can your arms to go faster yeah. because you are taking a test right now. So grab some of the stats. I want to encourage you guys as you're counting at home where you want to be. So you're counting the one knee, 
If you are, and unfortunately we don't have any numbers for under 60. There's been all kinds of studies done, but this is really a senior fitness test. This is part of our senior fitness program. Right, so it's for seniors, which is considered 60 and over. If you're under that, just figure out the numbers uh, based on a 60 year old. So if you are a male 60 to about 70, you wanna do 115 to 116. That would be above average. Below average would be about 87. So we're, what, a minute in right now. Yeah. You may gauge, okay, where am I? I've got, you know, I'm at uh, 60, or I'm at 40. I need, to, <laughs> yeah, I need to increase the speed so I can get up at least to 87, which is the below average. We'd like to see you at about 100, 105, somewhere in that ballpark, at least. Yeah, And at what least. about women? Women, um, if you're somewhere between 60 and 70, you want averages between 75 and 107. Above averages, over 107. And if you're like me and you're competitive and you were an athlete, you're going to do even more. <laughs> I mean, one day I think I did, what, 128 yeah, or something? Yeah. And I went, oh, okay, great. But you have to focus because, like, right now we're not going very I have no, fast. I haven't been counting. I have no idea yeah, where I we are. Been, and I know we haven't been pushing it to see. But this is, this, you know, you think about this exercise, oh, it's not, you know, it's really not, we're not doing anything. Do it for two minutes. Do it really and hard. And there you go, two minutes. And then you'll be out of breath. Yeah, you'll be a little bit out of breath. It's, I mean, it's two <laughs> minutes. And this, so that was the endurance test. And we wanted to give you the numbers because we like to have a goal. Yes. So if I told you, you know, you need to do 100 and halfway through you're only at 40, you know, you can increase the pace. Or if I say you, you have to try for 150, you know, then you can know and you can gauge yourself. So anyway. Well, keep a diary. If you're going to do this every other day, I mean, you can walk every day. Right. It, working out certain, like, arms or certain things you shouldn't do every day. but. Walking you can do every day. So every day or every other day, whatever your goal is today, try to attain a few more and continue to do that so that eventually you can take a long distance and actually be outside going for a walk and walking fast. Yeah, so this endurance test. Not weird fast though. No, well you can do that whole wiggle thing that they do in the Olympics. I don't know how they do that. They walk as faster than I run, but anyway. So if you want to do that, go ahead. Join a local group and go do that. But walking, lower body, you know, strength, endurance, so, so important. Just for everyday living, for walking around the grocery store, for, you know, walking to church, going out on a nature hike and up things stairs. like that. Stairs. My goodness. Uh, yeah. This kind of was a stair climber, you know, just stepping up and down. All right, let's do some exercises for the test. So now okay. we did the endurance test. We want to give you a couple simple exercises just to help you get in shape for the test. So you can do this test again next week. Do these exercises during the week. It'll help you on your test results. So the first one is just a one leg stand. So you're just gonna balance on one foot and you can do whatever you want with the other leg. And I encourage you try to balance for 30 seconds. You can hold your leg out to the side. You can hold it in front. You Find can hold it up here. Find something to touch if you lose your balance. No, that, then, then the clock stops. Oh. Yeah, so if you touch true. your foot down, the clock stops. If you touch your leg to the other leg, the clock stops. If you touch anything else, we want to try to see if you can do 30 seconds just on one foot. And you'll feel your, you know, your ankle's going to start to wiggle a little bit. Your mm -hmm. leg might wobble. Your whole body might wobble. So just try that for 30 seconds. You know, this is a great rehab. I'm still recovering from a really bad sprained ankle, and it was my right ankle. So You did really um, well, actually. That, you know, and, you, and I can still feel pulling a little bit, but that is a really good thing to strengthen your ankles. And believe it or not, ankles need to be really strong. Yes. I mean, you really need to be stable on your feet because if I had not been stable when I had that huge fall because I fell over a piece of equipment, <laughs> forgot it was there and ran right over it, um, I could have snapped my ankle. And even though I did, it didn't really do anything, didn't tear anything. Right. No break, no tear, no lasting yeah. injury. So praise the Lord, and I just lost my balance because I was talking. So anyway, that's, our, that's one of the tests you can do. Just stand for 30, or I'm sorry, one of the exercises you can do. Just to, and you can do this anytime. Just do that at home while you're watching TV. Just balance on one foot. The other one we want to encourage you to do is a one leg, just lift your knee. But we want it higher than we did during the test. Bring your knee up as high as you can, maybe waist height if you can. Now hold that. And what you're going to feel after about maybe one second or you know, ten, maybe five or ten seconds. You're going to wobble. Yeah, you're really <laughs> going to feel your thigh and it's really going to start to burn because you, once you get to a certain height, you're not using your stomach anymore. You're actually just using your thigh to hold it up. So get it as high as you can so that you're just engaging the top of the thigh, which is that drive for the test. After drive while, the leg you up. I want to do this because it burns. It does get heavy. So yeah, if it gets heavy, you know, do it for five, 10 seconds, then switch legs. Oh, but get I it. just Did thought you not we were legs? doing it for 30 seconds. <laughs> no, you can, you can do it for two minutes, whatever you can.
but get it as high as you can until you start really feeling that burn and then leave it there for a few more seconds. This works your ankle too. Whoa. So two minutes, that's all we're asking on the, on the test is just to march in place for two minutes. You know, you can get your cell phone out. Most cell phones have a little timer on them. You can time it on that. Or you can rewind this show, go back to the two minute clock we put up. Oh, well, that's right. <laughs> just keep doing that. Good, switch. So this is an addition Sorry. to the first, the first exercise we did, you know, was just to stand on one foot and you can do whatever you want with the other one. Now we're adding to that by lifting the knee. So now you're combining the first exercise, I which was like just I balancing. Do this. Is it getting heavy? No, I just <laughs> not, I realize I'm not getting as high as I need to. And then the other side. Well, keep in mind, this largest muscle group in the whole body is, you know, the back pocket all the way through the yep. thigh. So this is just a lot of tension. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I think I had too much watermelon. I got all off oh, kilter there. Oh, not even close. <laughs> How are we doing? I'm doing good. I want to do one more quick exercise. Okay. Just to build some strength for the walking. And that is a squat. It's one of the best exercises there is. But all you want to do is just act like you're going to sit back. It's almost like I'm going to sit back on the couch. But I'm going to do them just in slow motion because today we're doing everything. Oh, we marched, we already did work cardio <laughs> by marching for two minutes. So just squat down really slowly and you then realize, come back up. Somebody that, it, let's say the sound went off and they're just seeing us doing, what are they doing? <laughs> <laughs> then combine all three of them. So you could do a one foot stance for five or 10 seconds, bring the leg up, then step out into a squat. And then you would go to the other side, balance on one leg, bring the knee up, and then step out into a squat. Oh, we did that quite well without running yeah, into each good. other. Good, so one foot, knee up, and into a squat. Like I'll Simon says, <laughs> so I'll go at your count this time. Up, knee up, and then squat. And then hold that. Just relax, try to relax for a minute. So I encourage you to try that watermelon. That is so good. See, if, if you take it, I'm taking your mind off it though. If we talk about the watermelon, no, you quit I thinking about how bad know. your eyes burn. <laughs> All right, a couple more. And then we've got some scripture we're gonna discuss. So knee Sorry. up. Sorry, you know what? I didn't do it right. I didn't do this. You didn't do the one foot balance. Yeah, I didn't do the one foot balance, then the knee up, and then the squat. And the one foot, and the knee. knee up. Hey, we choreographed quite well. All right, go grab your phone, go grab your Bible. You can keep doing those exercises and then, or you can do the test again if you like, but we're gonna get into some scripture. So grab your Bible and turn to 1 Corinthians. Six. Six. We are gonna be in, we're gonna start in 1 Corinthians 6, 11. That is our verse for today. And we're gonna be reading out of the ERV, which is the easy to read version. We read a lot of versions, but we're gonna read the ERV just for this one scripture for today. And maybe another one after that. In the past, some of you who were like that, but you were washed clean, you were made holy, and you were made right with God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Yeah, so this is, we love to, when we're studying the scriptures, actually talk about, you know, the whole chapter. You don't just want to pull one verse out uh, because it's easier to understand when you put it into the context of the whole chapter. So this is Paul's letter to the church at Corinth. And the reason he's writing this is the church was in kind of a mess. They, you know, Paul was teaching and then Peter was teaching them. They had left and false teachers had crept in and the people started following these false teachers. So their doctrine was all, they were, as I say, they're way off the rails. So Paul was trying to bring them back and give them guidance and direction. They actually were suing each other in the Gentile courts. So right before this, Paul's telling them, what are you doing suing each other in the church in a Gentile court. So in other words, you're going to have judgment passed on you by a because man that doesn't having, even believe in God. Right, because you're having, they were just having quarrels about what was right, what was wrong, and then they're going over into asking a judge that doesn't know who Christ is, is not a Christian, 
and making a judgment on that. And so he's, he finds out and he's upset. Right. He's going, what are you doing? So that's you verses know? six. If you've got your Bible, look at verses six through eight. That's what he's saying in those verses six through eight. He's talking to them about why are you suing each other in a Gentile court? That makes absolutely no sense. Then in verse nine, he says, don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't fool yourselves. And we're going to go into this, but the reason we're bringing that up is if you just jump into verse 11 like we had, and he says, in the past, some of you were like that. You go, what are you talking why, about? Who yeah, was like that? Why did you what? just read that scripture to us <laughs> right, and so not now explain? We're going back to verse 9, which explains who he's talking about. So in the past, some of you were like that, and that's what he says in 9. Don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't fool yourselves. And then he goes through a whole list of people that won't inherit the kingdom of God. Yeah, he talks about sexual sin, uh, idol worship, idolatry, greed, drunkards, those who cheat people or abuse people. He said, you were once like that, but you were cleansed. You were made holy. You were made right with God by calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the spirit of our God. So he's, he's reminding them, why are you asking someone that doesn't know Christ, that hasn't been made holy, isn't the righteousness of God, that's been washed by the blood of Jesus, why are you asking them to make an opinion on something that is a church decision? He's saying, isn't there someone among you that knows who they are in Christ, that can pray and ask for the wisdom of the Lord and make a decision based on that for on behalf of the church? So. That's why he's using this. And the church actually had structure and it had an establishment. Yeah. They had elders, deacons, things like that, where if you had an issue with a brother or sister in the church, you would go to that, they would call them wise men. You would go to the wise person of the church and they could, they would pass a judgment. Um, but instead these people were, there were so many or, uh, quarrels and arguments, they weren't even going to the wise men of the church. They were actually going outside of that just to a regular judge. And Paul's rebuking them, basically reprimanding them for that. And then he's telling them about those that won't inherit the kingdom. In other words, some of you were like that, and some of the church was going back to that. He, earlier in the letter, he talks about sexual immorality and adultery and some of those things that had crept into the church um, that shouldn't be tolerated. He's saying you need to remain righteous. In other words, all of these sinners, these sins, you know, the idol worship, adultery, greed, some of these things, they aren't going to inherit the kingdom of God. Some of you were like that, but you're not like that anymore. Yeah. So don't go back to that. In other words, if I'm going to a dinner with the king or the president or whoever it might be, you know, I'm gonna dress up and look as nice as I can. If I was out playing with, what, the pigs <laughs> and I'm all muddy, I'm not, and then I get cleaned up before I go have dinner with the king, I'm not gonna go back and play with the pigs again and get dirty. And that's what he's saying. You guys have been washed clean. Why would you go back and get dirty again? You're clean, you're ready for. You're the righteousness of God. You've been made holy right. by the shed blood of Jesus. You know, there was another question that came to us by somebody and they said, how do I deal with someone that is always reminding me of my past? Mm. And this is a prime example of knowing who you are in Christ. Maybe you were like that somewhere in your life. Maybe you did do something, but you have repented, given your heart to Christ, and that old person doesn't exist anymore. So you can easily tell that person, well, that might have been who I was but that's not who I am now. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. I've been washed by the blood of Christ. You know, I've been sanctified. I am the righteousness of God. And you can do that by loving that person and explaining because a lot of people, they don't know any better. They don't realize they're trying to remind you of who you are. When God doesn't remember that, you can't go to God and go, hey God, you know I was this, this, and this. He's like, you are? It's you been know, I don't clean, know yeah. you that way. I know you as who I have created you to be and who, since you've repented and have changed, you are now. So and who, who better to preach that than Paul? Paul? Paul was Saul, who was a persecutor of Christians, yeah. held the coats while Stephen was being stoned, you know, went to, on, on the road to Damascus to arrest the Christians and bring them back. So he was a persecutor killer of Christians as Saul. Now that he's Paul, he's preaching the gospel. Who better to explain, look, you're not that person anymore. You know, people could come up to him and say, well, I'm not, who are you to preach to me? Aren't you the guy that was killing people? No, that wasn't me. I don't even know who that guy was. Actually, later in the scriptures, he says he that. He says, I've, no never, I've done no 
wrong. It's like, wait a minute, we're, no, Paul hasn't done any wrong, Saul did, but Paul being redeemed, being washed by the blood, being washed clean. So it, that's what he's reminding the church. You guys, that's not you anymore. Some of you were like that, but that's not you anymore. You're new and actually you've been paid for. You were purchased by the blood of Christ. That's an expensive, expensive, expensive purchase. So you weren't, you weren't just bought for a few uh, shekels or you know, a few dollars, you were bought by the blood of Christ. So you were totally washed clean. Let's look at the Passion Bible sure. again. I kind of like how some of this it says. It says, it's not right for a believer to sue a fellow believer and especially to bring it before the unbelievers. Don't you realize that when you drag another, another believer into court, you're providing the evidence that you are already defeated? Wouldn't it be better to accept the fact that someone is trying to cheat or take advantage of you and simply choose the high road? At times, it's better to just accept injustice and even to let someone take advantage of you rather than to expose our conflicts publicly before unbelievers. But instead, you keep cheating and doing wrong to your brothers and sisters and then request that an unbeliever renders their judgment. And then he talks about, surely you know, you must know that who, people that practice evil cannot possess God's kingdom realm. Yeah. Stop being deceived. So he starts talking to him about being deceived by doing the things that they're doing in this church. This is a mess. And Paul is talking to them as their spiritual father. Yeah. Because he has started this church. He and Peter have started this church and he keeps coming back. And they're writing letters going, what about this? Mm -hmm. And what about that? And how do we deal with this? And how do we? So he's, and then he hears about this and he says, I have heard that you are doing this. So he's reminding them, don't you know who you are? It's written out of love. I mean, yes. he is bringing correction, but it's done out of love like a father would. You don't want a child to run into the street, so out of love, you grab them and pull them back into the driveway. Don't or, do that. Yeah, you don't, yeah. you don't want them to you put their hand on a hot stove. You're trying to protect them, and that's what he's saying here. These people aren't fit for the kingdom of God. I'm trying to protect you. You've been washed clean. You're no longer that. So as a father, I love you so much. In this love letter, I want to bring correction so you guys stay on the right path because they had gotten off path. They're suing each other. They're going to a Gentile judge, and you say, no, 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 you guys, forgiveness. Practice forgiveness. What did Jesus say? If the man asks for your coat, give him your, give him your shirt and your tunic and whatever everything else you have. So in other words, forgive, forgive, forgive. If you, if you hold that unforgiveness, no one would ever listen to Paul preach because they hold unforgiveness for who, what he did as Saul. But since he's been washed clean, they can now look at him as Paul as their preacher. That's awesome. As their father, their spiritual leader. Yes, their <laughs> spiritual leader. So today is a really good message of so many different aspects of what Jesus has done, the Holy Spirit's done through you, and how we can go to the Word to get advice when we end up with a question. Go to the Word. Go to your brother, go to your sister, and then go to the Word and find out what does the Word say, and what does the Word of God, what does Jesus say about you? You've been washed clean, you're the righteousness of God. And if you aren't positive that you feel that way, about, and you keep being reminded of your past, you can say, wait a minute, I know I have, and, and you can easily do it if you've never before given your heart to Christ. Do it right now. Just say, Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Thank you that you died on the cross for me and shed your blood for me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. And we always pray for you on the program, and we use the Bible to pray for you. And that's 3 John 1, 2, Beloved, I pray that in all respects you may prosper and be in good health just as your soul Prospers. Thank you so much for joining us. We love you guys. God bless. Love you.